Samakyana Timanda Syant Sinan Sinan Sinakyana Shaksavan Vaditam Yena Trasmai Sikova Venama Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pistaya Bhutale Simate Bhakti Vinata Swamiti Namine Namaste Saraswata Devi Gauravani Pacharine Nirvashe Sashvatya Desantarine So today we will, if Krishna willing, end this pastime of Bali Maharaj. We are coming shortly to a conclusion. We heard how after being arrested, Bali Maharaj was addressed by the family. And we were going to read the last two verses uh, spoken of these prayers. Of course, then the Lord will continue. Well, these are not prayers. These are the Lord Farman Dave speaking. And he will continue speaking, but in the last verses of the chapter, he will give his benedictions that, uh, but first, yes, we read this text 29.30, and it's like a, a, a long list of slaps in the face. <laughs> Once we have after reading this first, we will go back to the beginning, to the first word, to the first uh, first spoken by Lord Ramande. I read the purpose. Text 29.30. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Although bereft of his riches, fallen from his original position, defeated and arrested by his enemy, rebuked and deserted by his relatives and friends, although suffering the pain of being bound, and although rebuked and cursed by his spiritual master, Bali Maharaj being fixed in his vow did not give up his truthfulness. It was certainly with pretension that I spoke about religious principles, but he did, he did not give up religious principles, for he is true to his word, to, to his word that, uh, so hereafter from text 31 until 36, there is a description of Vamandev reciprocates with Bali Maharaj. So it takes everything, but he will be given even more. Palmer had given up what is bound to take him from him by time. And I've gained jewels, true wealth, that uh, truly mine from which I never will be separated. So it is about giving up the temporary to gain the eternal, that's a good business. Palat Maharaj, he heard, said in the seventh canto, Kamara Acharit Pahyo Dharmam Bhaktami in him, Dodapam Manusam Janatap Yadruvam Achtadam. Palat Maharaj said that one with sufficiently intelligence, we should use the human form of life from the, from the very beginning of life. The human, the, the, so, yeah, it says the human form of body. Use it from the very beginning of life. In other words, from the tender age of childhood. To practice the activities of devotional service, giving up all, all other engagements. The human body is most rarely achieved, and although temporary like other bodies, it's meaningful because in human life one can perform devotional service. Even a slight amount of sincere devotional service can give one complete perfection. 
with the human form. Life one can gain the eternal. So Ramon Dave is speaking here and we go back to the first verse he spoke to Bali Maharaj. Yeah, the first verse, 24 was the first verse that, uh, that we, we will go back to 25, because I read this purport. I read the text 25 again. While rotating in the cycle of birth and death again and again in different species, because of his own food activities, the dependent living entity, by good fortune, may happen to become a human being. This human birth is very rarely obtained. That uh, the purpose, the supreme personality of God it is fully independent. Thus, it is not always a fact that the living being's loss of all opulence is a sign of the Supreme Lord's mercy upon him. So some, sometimes when one has no pride and, not, and no proprietorship, so then the mercy may come in the form of opulence. So the Lord can act any way he likes. He may take away one's opulence, or he may not. There are varieties of forms of life. The Lord treats them according to the circumstances as he chooses. Generally, it is to be understood that the human form of life is one of great responsibility. Um, Prakriti Pusa Prakriti Bhukti Prakriti Jankunam the living entity in material nature follows the ways of life, enjoying the three modes. This is due to the association of material nature. Does he meet with good and, and evil among the various species? After the rotating through many, many forms of life in the cycle of birth and death, the living being gets a chance for a human form. Therefore, every human being, especially one belonging, to a civilized nation or culture must be extremely responsible in his activities. He should not risk degradation in the next life because the body will change. We should be extremely careful to see the proper use of life is the purpose of Krishna consciousness. The foolish living entity declares freedom from all control, but actually is not free is under the control of material nature. He must therefore be most careful and responsible in his activities of life. And the next purport, when in spite of possessing all these opulences, a person is not proud. This means that he is fully aware of that all these opulences are due to the mercy of the Supreme Personality of God. He therefore engages all his positions in the service of the Lord. A devotee knows very well that everything, even his body, belongs to the Supreme Lord. That is, of course, why we put tilak on the body. That uh, This shows that the body is the place where the Lord dwells. And it is not meant for sensual pleasure, but it's made for worship of the Lord, therefore, let me use this body in his service. So if one lives perfectly in such Krishna consciousness, it is to be understood that he is especially favored by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So that brings up the point, if, if one can do this, then that shows that one has received Krishna's mercy. It's extraordinary. It is wonderful if someone can live in this world, but without being in the grip of it due to due to his sense of possessing. So cultivating a sense of possessiveness is what conditioned souls do and become free from it means one ceases to become 
conditions. So the conclusion is that once, once being deprived of his wealth is not to be considered the special mercy of the Lord. If one continues in his opulent position, but does not become unnecessarily proud, falsely, falsely think that he's a proprietor of everything, then that is a Lord's special mercy. Now the purpose to text 27. Devotees like Dhruva Maharaj, who was given unlimited material opulence, have the special mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Once Kuvera wanted to give Dhruva Maharaj a benediction, but although Dhruva Maharaj could, could have asked for any amount of material opulence, he instead begged Kuvera that he might continue his devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When a devotee is fixed in his devotional service, there is no need for the Lord to deprive him of his material opulences. The Supreme Personality of Godhead never takes away material opulence achieved because of devotional service, although he sometimes takes away opulences achieved by pious activities. He does he does this to make a devotee prideless or put him in a better position in devotional service. If a devotee, if a special devotee is meant for preaching but does not give up his family life or material opulence to take to the service of the Lord, the Lord surely takes away all his material opulences and establishes him in devotional service. Thus the pure devotee becomes fully engaged in propagating Krishna consciousness. In this verse, the words Siddhanapi, Namuchati are very important. A devotee is sometimes put in adversity while executing the voice of service. In adversity, everyone laments and becomes aggrieved, but by the grace of the Supreme Person, after we got it, a devotee even in the worst condition, can understand that he's going to such a severe examination by the Supreme Person of the Apostles. Bali Maharaj passed all such examinations and ex as explained in the following verse. Of course, it, it's much easier to preach to others how to deal with the difficulties of life, for sure. And that... Uh, it's more easy to preach about it than it is happening to oneself. The mind has the tendency to, 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 to spill downwards and forget the whole wonderful philosophy that we hear. We hear it and we forget it. Dying is so difficult because we are losing the thing that we are so attached to, the body. It is so disturbing disturbing and by one by one each of our senses we will lose what is the last sense is the hearing at least in a natural process but not always that uh, it's such a blessing that sense of hearing is the last sense to go it's uh, if difficulties come then a devotee sees that Krishna is preparing me examination or real test comes at the time of death. In the purpose of 2930, Srila Papa writes, Pali Maharaj passed the severe test put before him by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is a further proof of the Lord's mercy towards his devotee. The Supreme Personality of Godhead sometimes puts a devotee to severe tests that are almost unbearable. One could hardly even live under the conditions forced upon Bali Maharaj. So it's so amazing if you think about it. It took away all, my, my, all Bali Maharaj's positions. And then, then Bali Maharaj did something noble. He offered his head to Vamandev's third step. Then Vamandev bound him up and embarrassed him in front of all his followers, his wife, his family members. He completely humiliated him. He lost his effulgence and his potency. So unromantic. When we do the right thing, 
then we expect the whole world to, to stand up and tell us how wonderful you are. And still Bali Maharaj kept fixed in his heart that uh, you do what you like with me, like a purchased animal, it is said. I've given myself just like an animal. This is an example that explains Atmani Vedana. Sell an animal to someone else. When the animal is sold to the previous, the previous owner, is, owner is not concerned anymore how the animal will be maintained. And one sells oneself or, or places oneself fully in the service of Krishna. Now I'm yours. However you treat me is up to you. So this Atmani Vedanam of Bali Maharaj is very rare. This is placing oneself under the protection of the Lord. Last part of the part of 29.30. That Bala Maharaj endured all severe tests and austerities is the mercy of the Supreme Lord. The Lord certainly appreciates the devotee's forbearance and it is recorded for the future glorification of the devotee. This was not an ordinary test. As described in this verse, hardly anyone could survive such a test. But for the future glorification of Bali Maharaj, one of the Mahajans, the Supreme Personality of God, had not only tested him, but also gave him the strength to tolerate such adversity. The Lord is so kind to his devotee that when severely testing him, the Lord gives him the necessary strength to be tolerant and continue to remain a glorious devotee. That now in verses 31, in 31 till uh, 36, we will hear what our Lord Vamandev is going to reciprocate. That, uh, to text 31. Esame papita stanam dus papam amare rapi savarner antarasyaham babitendro matasvaya. The Lord continued. Because of his great tolerance, I have given him a place even by the not obtainable even by the demigods. He will become king of the heavenly planets during the period of the Mano known as Savarni. That so he will give him the planet Sutal, which is more opulent than heaven, and he will become the Indra during the next time frame, a different reign of Mano. Then he will be the Indra. And now he's, but first he has to go to Sutal, which is more opulent than the heavenly planets. It's better than the heavenly planets. So he gets a better place now. And then in next life, he becomes Indra in the next man, period of the next man. 32. Until Bali Maharaj achieves the position of king of heaven, he shall live on the planet of Sutal, which was made by Vishvakarma according to my order. Because it, it is especially protected by me, it is free from mental and bodily miseries, fatigue, dizziness, defeat, and all other disturbances. Bali Maharaj, you may know, now go to live there peacefully. That, uh, so he's giving him a place better than heaven. So, O oh, Bali Maharaj, in the Asena, now you may go to the planet Sutal, which is desired even by the demigods. Live there peacefully, surrounded by your friends and relatives, all good fortune unto me, unto you. 34. On the planet Sutal, not even the predominating deities of other planets, but to speak of ordinary people, will be able to conquer you. As far as the demons are concerned, if they transgress your rule, my disc will kill them. 
interesting. So there's some real build them. But, uh, oh, great hero, I shall always be with you and give you protection in all respect, along with your association and paraphernalia. Moreover, you will, be, you will always be able to see me there. So that's the greatest gift. And 36, because you will see my supreme prowess, your materialistic ideas and anxieties, whatever is, and from your association with the demons and downers, will immediately be vanquished. That, uh, so, what was the great, what was the greatest gift we hear here? What was the greatest reciprocation? It's that the Lord will always stay with him. I will always be with you and give you protection in all respects. That's the greatest gift. We read the purpose of the last text. The Lord assured Palimites of all protection. And finally, the Lord assured him of protection from the effects of bad association with the demons. Palimites certainly became an exalted devotee, but he was somewhat anxious because his association was not purely devotional. Supreme Personality of God had therefore assured him that his demonic, the mentality, would be annihilated. That's a great protection. Because he will see the Lord always and associate with him. In other words, by the association of devotees, that uh, by the association of devotees, the demoni demoniac mentality is vanquished. That Satam Pasangam Mamavirka Sambido, Bavantrit Kerna Rasayana Kata, that you is not a Bavaria Bachmanish, Hadarity Bakhtiana Pranishanti, by association of devotees. That when a demon associates with devotees, engaged in glorifying the Supreme Person of, of Godhead, he becomes surely a pure. Devotee. So now, now of course, the Lord. That so the Lord is going to give heaven back to Indra and the demigods. That uh, is the question of Maras problem. That. Uh, did Bali Maharaj have the demoniac mentality? No, he was a pure devotee. But even a pure devotee who is in association with demons gets influenced by that and by their plans and by their ideas. That, uh, so we need to protect ourselves, even if we become pure. If we associate again with demons, we will become impure. That, uh, so. We have here, this is this question, these three reasons why the Lord surviving Palamites, the Sutta blood planet, was a great benediction. So this question I will put again before the break in half an hour, and you can then put your answers in the chat. But now we are entering chapter 23, the demigods regaining the heavenly planets. That, uh, and interesting in this pastime is, yes, Indra and the demigods can go back to have the heavenly planets, but then at the conclusion of the pastime, Lord Van Vamandev is going to have a word with Sukracharya and asked him, and he asked Sukracharya, what did Bali Maharaj did? What did what did he do wrong? He will ask, and we will hear the answer of Sukracharya, which is very interesting. So, chapter twenty-three, twenty-three. 
the demigods were again the heavenly planets. Text one. Shishuka vacha et yukta vantam purusham puratanam mahanavavo kilasadu sammata padanjalir pas pakalak kuleksanu bhaktyut kalogat kadaraya kira bhavit Goswami said, when the supreme ancient eternal personality of God had uh, just spoken to Balamaraj, who is universally accepted as a pure devotee of the Lord, and therefore a great soul, Balamaraj, his eyes filled with tears, his hands folded, and his voice faltering in devotional ecstasy, responded as follows. Text 2. Bali Maharaj said, what a wonderful effect there is, there is even attempting, attempting to offer respectful obeisance to you. I merely endeavored to offer your obeisance, but nonetheless the attempt was as successful as those of your devotees. The causeless mercy you have shown me, a fallen demon, was never achieved even by the demigods or the leaders of various planets. Great Srila Prabhupada's purpose of this verse. When Vanam Dev appeared before Bali Maharaj, Bali Maharaj immediately wanted to offer him respectful obeisance, but he was unable to do so because of the presence of Sukhacharya and other demoniac associates. The Lord is so merciful, however, that although Bali Maharaj did not actually offer obeisance, but only endeavored to do so within the mind, the Supreme Personality of God had blessed him with more mercy than even the demigods could ever expect. expect. As confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, Svalpamasya, Svalpamapyasya Dharmasya, Tayatramato, by even a little advancement on this path can protect one from the most dangerous type of fear. The Supreme Personality of God it is known as Bhavagai Janardana because he takes only the essence of a devotee's attitude. If a devotee sincerely surrenders the Lord as, this, uh, as a super soul in everyone's heart, immediately understands this. Thus, even though externally a devotee may not render full service, if he's internally sincere and serious, the Lord welcomes his service nonetheless. Thus, the Lord is known as Bhava Krahi Chanardan because he takes the essence of one's devotional mentality. So, this purpose gives us hope, right? Gives hope to the devotees. Encouraging. If if we didn't do that, then what hope would we have? We need mercy, not justice over good things and bad things. That uh, since he views us like this, then consider how he views others. Just imagine that he, he views us in the same way that he views others. If we act towards others and see their attempts and value and value that, and especially within spiritual institutions, and that the devotee really try their best, although their, their motivations may be somewhat mixed, that uh, they are sincerely trying. And if you manage in a heavy way, people take that of criticism on their sincerity. From their point of view, they are making a sincere endeavor. Devil. It is so difficult to manage in a religious, spiritual institution. From the spiritual point, sincerity is all we have in some sense. All the other factors are made up by Krishna. Bhava Gai Janardam, the Lord saw sincerity. Although he was bound with the ropes and could not offer a basis, and he gave himself. He may think that 
We may think that I'm chanting for so many years, trying to purify myself and still this is happening to me and that is happening to, my, to me. Bali Maharaj wasn't seeing all these things. That uh, read the text. We continue reading text three. Sukadev Goswami continued. After speaking in this way, Bali Maharaj offered his obeisances first to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, and then to, to Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva. Thus he was released from the bondage of the Naga Pasa, the ropes of Varuna. And in full satisfaction, he entered the planet known as Sutal. Thus having delivered the proprietorship of the heavenly plants to Indra, and having fulfilled the desire of Aditya, uh, Aditi, mother of the demigods, the Supreme Personality of God, ruled the affairs of the universe. When Palat Maharaj heard how Bali Maharaj's grandson and descendant had been released from bondage and had achieved the benediction of the Lord, he spoke as follows in a tone of greatly ecstatic devotion. Palat Maharaj said, O oh, Supreme Personality of God, you yeah, are universally worshipped, even Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva worship your lotus feet. Yet, although you are a great personality, you have kindly promised to protect us, the demons. I think that such kindness has never been achieved even by Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, or the gods of fortune, Lakshmi, but to speak of other demigods or common people. Yeah. So, the Lord, yeah. The Lord promised this, that uh, in the previous chapter, if you go back, I read the verse again, 35, the previous chapter, he said, O oh, great hero, I shall always be with you and give you protection in all respect, <coughs> along with your associates and paraphernalia. Moreover, you will always be able to see me. That, uh, so it's amazing that it takes everything away from Bali Maharaj and from with, with Palat's grandson. But yet they are simply appreciative. They know what he is doing, that why he's doing that. A devotee is free from anxiety because everything um, happens in this world. Everything that, happen, that happens in this world, a devotee sees Krishna's hand. Text 7. O Supreme Shelter, that... Uh, O Supreme Shelter of everyone, great personalities like Brahma enjoy their perfection simply by tasting the honey of rendering service at your lotus feet. But as for us, we are all rogues and, and debauchees, born of an envious family of demons. However, we received your mercy. It has been possible only because your mercy is ghostless. But we cannot force the mercy of Lord Krishna. One can do his best to attract it, but finally it depends on Krishna. Text 8. Oh my Lord, your pastimes are wonder wonderfully performed by your inconceivable spiritual energy and by your perverted trip and by a perverted reflection, the material energy, we have created all the universes. As a super soul of all living entities, you are aware of everything, and therefore you are certainly equal to everyone. Nonetheless, you favor your devotees. This is not partiality, however, for your characteristic is just like that of a desired tree, which yields everything according 
to one's desire. That, uh, so we will read parts of the purport in the beginning. It said, the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 9, 20, 29, Samam Sarvabhuti Sunamit Yudveshut Stinapya Yebhajan Tumam Bhaktiya Maitete Si Tsapyam I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone, but I'm equal to all. But whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend, is in me, and I'm, I'm also a friend to him. So there are two categories, a non-devotee, and a devotee. So everyone can take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord and get the benedictions, but non-devotees do not do so. And consequently, they are under the influence of the law of nature. The facility of devotion service is open to everyone and therefore is equal to everyone. The purpose, the king or government is equal to all citizens. Therefore, if a citizen capable of receiving special favors from the government is offered such favors, this does not, does not mean that the government is partial. One who knows how to receive favors from the authority can receive them, but one who does not neglect these favors and does not, one does not receive them. So, Srila says that Krishna will treat everyone equal, but not everyone takes advantage of Krishna's offer to become a devotee and to get a special treatment. From this we learn that we have such an opportunity to surrender to Krishna, which gives us the possibility to attract Krishna's favoritism and get a special treatment that, that cares and protects his devotee. The devotees do not, don't want anything other than taking shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. So that is Krishna's kindness. And that is open to everyone, irrespective of gender or caste, nationality or family, or even irrespective of one's religion. The door is open. Just give yourself to Krishna and accept the fact that every individual soul is a servant of Krishna. Mukti or liberation means that we return to our natural position. It is our actual natural constitutional position. When we place ourselves in that natural position, then we get naturally the nourishment of our soul. That is what we lack when we are not in that consciousness and we have turned our back to Krishna. Something, something is disturb, disturbing us and I can't figure out what it is. It has to do with our level of relationship with Krishna. When we make the attempt as Bali Maharaj, then Krishna will see the sincerity in the attempt and he will reciprocate accordingly. That is his promise. Further the purport. The demigods are fully aware, aware of the Supreme Lord's position and therefore they are obedient to him. But even if demons know about the supremacy of the Lord, they purposely defy his authority. Therefore, the Lord makes distinctions according to the mentality of the living being, but otherwise is equal to everyone. Like a desire tree, the Lord fulfills the desires of one who takes shelter of him, but one who does not take shelter is distinct from the surrendered soul. One who takes shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord is favored by the Lord regarding of whether one such a person is a demon or a demigod. So it's like a desire tree. A desire tree uh, reciprocates with everyone according to one's desires, but because the devotees take shelter of the Lord, the Lord give, gives them shelter. Now we hear the Lord replies again. He will reply again to Prahlad. Text 9. Text 9. 
the Supreme Personality of God had said, My dear son Prahlad, all good fortune unto you. For the time being, please go to the place known as Sutal and there enjoy happiness with your grandson and your other relatives and friends. The Supreme Personality of God had assured Prahlad Maharaj, you shall be able to see me there in my usual feature with conchal disc, club, and lotus in my hand, because of your transcendental bliss due to always personally seeing me, that you will have no further bondage to fruitive activities. At uh, 10, 11, 12. Shilya Sukadev Goswami said, accompanied by Bali Maharaj, my dear King Pariksit, Palat Maharaj, the master of all the chiefs of the demons, took the Supreme Lord's order on his head with folded hands. After saying yes to the Lord, circumambulating him and offering him respectful obeisance, he entered the lower planetary system known as Sutal. Hari, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayan thereafter addressed Sukracharya, who was sitting nearby in the midst of the assembly with priests, Brahma, Hota, Utkata, and Ad Advaryo. For my experience, these priests were all Brahma Vadis, followers of the Vedic principles for performing sacrifice. So, all the, all the participants are walking off stage in this drama. But now, Sukracharya, what is he thinking all the time? That his words have come true. He told ba Bali not to give to not to give this beggar anything because he's a supreme lord and even lie. He cursed him and said, you lose everything. And indeed, the curse of Sukracharya was what the demigods were waiting for. The demigods had gone to the Lord and asked him, please help us. The Lord said that he could not go against the blessings of Sukracharya. Then Sukracharya withdraws his blessings and curses him. So this was part of the plan. He lost everything. Palman Dev would not take anything from him until Sukacharya's blessings were withdrawn. Palman Dev was waiting for that. So Sukacharya was angry at Bali for not following his order. Not following the order of the spiritual master is considered a great fault. And now Sukacharya is standing there in the midst of the assembly of priests. And these priests were all Brahmavadis, followers of the principles of performing Vedic sacrifice. Now, Vaman Dev is asking Sukracharya what a blemish or fault is of his disciple. So, text 14. O best of the Brahmins, Sukracharya, please describe the fault of this discrepancy in your disciple Bali Maharaj who engaged in performing sacrifices. His fault will be nullified when judged in the presence of qualified Brahmins. So Brahman Dev is testing Sukhacharya here. That, uh, he says, what's the fault? What's the fault? What is his fault before you cursed him for not listening to you? That, uh, so in the guise of finding the fault in Balamaraj, he's testing to look what Sukacharya has understood. So the next verse is extremely important. That uh, 15. 15. Sukacharya said, My Lord, you are the enjoyer. You are the lawgiver in all performances of sacrifice. 
You have the Czechia pose, a person to whom all sacrifices are offered. If one has fully satisfied you, where is the chance of discrepancies or faults in his performances of sacrifice? That, uh, so he's saying that Sukhacharya is saying here that Pali Maharaj was indeed faultless, had no fault. Only a superficial fault, he said, because we are satisfied the superficial fault is only on the servants and it has no, no meaning. Now, a very important verse follows 16. There may be discrepancies in pronouncing the mantras and observing the regulated principles and moreover, there may be discrepancies in regards to time, place, person and paraphernalia. But when your Lordship's holy name is chanted, everything becomes faultless. The Kacharya is saying, yes, there may be some discrepancy in the process, in the tantra, in the pronunciation of the mantras, and there may be some fault in according, in, in according with doing the sacrifice exactly according to, pli, to place and time. Otherwise, there is no result, and even the opposite result may occur. But all these externals of the performance of, 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 of all these externals of the, of the performance, they are perfect when there is constantly chanting of the holy name. So therefore, everything we may do, even as faultly as it may be, our attempts should be accompanied by ideally constantly chanting the holy name. So not that one should chant with the idea to nullify the bad effects of the fault this is no offense against the holy name. So the Papa's purpose of the text 16. That, uh, so. Chichitaya Mapu is recommended. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nameva Kebalam. Nasteva, Nasteva, Nasteva Gati Anyata. In this age of quarrel and hypocrisy, the only means of deliverance is chanting the holy name of the Lord. There is no other way, there is no other way, there is no other way. Nabriyan Naradiya Purana. In this age of Kali, it is extremely difficult to perform pedicure, the ritualistic ceremonies or sacrifices perfectly. Hardly anyone can chant the Vedic mantras with perfect pronunciation or accumulate the paraphernalia for Vedic performances. So, yeah, accumulate the paraphernalia for Vedic performances, all these details of this sacrifice. But but uh, if, even have the proper cleanliness or if, uh, having the articles purified, it's, it's not evident. So therefore the sacrifice recommended in this age is Sankirtan, constant chanting of the holy name of the Lord. Sachnai Sarkin, Sankirtana Prayer Yandi Isu Medasa. Instead of wasting time performing Vedic sacrifices, those who are intelligent those who possess good brain substance should take to the chanting of the Lord's holy name and thus perform sacrifice perfectly. I've seen that many religious leaders are addicted to performing jachyas and spending hundreds and thousands of rupees for imperfect sacrificial performances. So this is a lesson for those who unnecessarily execute such imperfect sacrifices. We should take the advice of Shaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sakhner Sankir Tanapayer Yayanti Sumedasa. Although Sukhacharya was a strict Brahman addicted to ritualistic activities, he also admitted 
Nishitram Anusan Kirtanam Tava. My Lord, constant chant of your holy name of your Lordship makes everything perfect. In Kali Yuga, the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies, they cannot be performed as perfectly as before. Therefore, Shiva Goswami has recommended that all the ones should take care of care to follow all the principles in every kind of spiritual activity, especially in deity, in worship of the deity, here is still a chance of discrepancies. And one should compensate for this by chanting the holy name of the Supreme Personality of God. In our Krishna Conscious Movement, we therefore give special stress to the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mantra in all activities. In the text. 17, and we will hear the conclusion of Sukhacharya. Lord Vishnu, I must nonetheless act in obedience to your order because everything obeying your order is most auspicious and is the first duty of everyone. So he concluded Bali Maharaj was indeed faultless. Therefore, the fault of criticizing Bala, Bali Maharaj was his fault. That was his conclusion of Sukracharya. So by judging a fault in the presence of qualified Brahmins, the fault is removed. Of course, Sukracharya's own fault was removed by judging, by noting his own fault in the presence of the Lord and the Brahmins. Text 18 to 21. We will finish the chapter and then take a break. That we will go a little over one hour, but not much. 18. Sukadev Goswami continued, in this way, the most powerful Sukhacharya accepted the order of the Supreme Personality of God with full respect. Along with the Brahmins, he began to compensate for the discrepancies in the sacrifice performed by Bali Maharaj. But King Parichi, thus having taken all the land of Bali Maharaj by begging, the Supreme Personality of God, Lord Vamadev, delivered it to his brother Indra, all the land that had taken away by Indra's enemies. Enemy. Lord Brahma, the master of King Daksha and all the Pajabatis, accompanied by all the demigods, the great saintly persons, the inhabitants of Pitri, Loka, the Manus, the Munis, and such leaders as Daksha, Brihu, and Angira, as well as Kartikeya and Lord Shiva, accepted Lord Vaman's Dev as a protector of everyone. He did this for the pleasure of Kashyapa Muni and his wife Aditi, and for the welfare of all the inhabitants of the universe, including their various leaders. So because the devotees, Kashyapa and Aditi, desired him to come, he came. For it came for the uplifting of the universe, who was in a difficult position because demonic elements gained too much control. That uh, text 22, 23. Oh, King Parikshit, Indra was considered the king of all the universe, but the demigods headed by Lord Brahma wanted Upendra, Lord Vamandev, as the protector of the Vedas, the principles of religion, fame, opulence, auspicious, uh, of auspiciousness, vows, uh, elevation to, to the higher planetary systems and liberation. But they accepted Upendra, Lord Bamandev, as the supreme master of everything. This decision made all living entities extremely happy. That uh, takes 24. Thereafter, Along with all the leaders of the heavenly planets, Indra, the king of heaven, placed Lord Vamandev before and with the approval of Lord Brahma, brought him to the heavenly planet in a celestial airplane. Indra, the king of heaven, being protected by the arms of Vamandev, the supreme personality of God, had thus regained his rule of the three worlds and was reinstated in his own position, supreme, opulent, fearless and fully satisfied. So it is interesting that Indra placed himself under the Lord. He was fully happy because 
he was a devotee of Bamondev, who is the actual ruler, the Supreme Lord. When Bali took over, then Indra was not happy with that. He was happy, happy under the protection of the Supreme Lord. Text 26, 27. Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Lord Kartikeya, the great sage Brihu, other saintly person, the inhabitants of Pitriloka, and other, all other living entities, including the inhabitants of Siddha Loka, and living entities who travel in outer space by airplane, all glorify the uncommon activities of Lord Bamandev. O King, while chanting about and glorifying the Lord, they return to their respective heavenly planets. They also praise the position of Aditi. That, uh, 28. So this is the Shruti fall, the benediction of hearing this past time. O Maharaj Brexit, please, of your, please, uh, yeah. O Maharaj Brexit, pleasure of your dynasty, I have now described to you everything about the wonderful activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Ramandev. Those who hear about this are certainly freed from all the results of sinful activities. So by hearing this pastime, our tendency to surrender and serve will increase. Sinful reactions that we carry in our heart, our petty selfishness is removed. So that is one benediction, to be freed from all sinful actions for those who hear this pastime. Now text 29, when we subject to death, cannot measure the glories of the Supreme Personality of God, the Tripikram, Lord Vishnu, any more than he can count the number of atoms on the entire planet. No one, whether born already or destined to take birth, is able to do this. This has been sung by the great sage Vashista. That uh, so no one, yes, no one is able to count the atoms in this entire universe. Go read the purport. Vasista Muni has given a mantra about Lord Vishnu. Nate Vishnu Jaya Mano Nachato Maimna Param Anantam Apa. No one can estimate the extent of the uncommonly glorious, glorious activities of Lord Vishnu. Unfortunately, there are so-called scientists who are subject to death at every moment, but are trying to understand by speculation the wonderful creation of the cosmos. This is a foolish attempt. Long, long ago, Fascista Muni said, that no one in the past could measure the glories of the Lord and that no one can do so in the future. One must simply be satisfied with seeing the glorious activities of the Supreme Lord's creation. The Lord therefore says in Bhagavad Gita, Pista Bhyamidam Krishna Makam Sanastito Jagat with a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support everything in this universe. So we see in this world a wonderful ecological system in place. Plants that uh, they are absorbing carbon, carbon dioxide and they are giving oxygen through the process of photosynthesis. So Carbon dioxide is necessary for humans and animals to breathe. By studying nature, we, we get a hint of the greatness of the Lord. That, uh, so, and this universe is maintained by one Eka Amsa, a portion of the Lord's in, in, in energy, then just right to imagine how potent the Lord is, inconceivably. He lifts his toe and pierces the universe, but even that is not the extent of his potency. 
we are approaching the tenth canto and these pastimes are preparing us for that. Lord Krishna wanders in Vrindavan and plays his flute and maintains all these universes. He is still unlimitedly powerful, although he looks an ordinary coward boy. We must say that he's the most extraordinary beautiful, beautiful one. His activities are Nara Lila, that uh, Nara Lila, they are, they are like imitating the activities of a human being, but they are not the activities of a, view, of a human being. The, purpose, the material world consists of innumerable universes, each of one full of innumerable planets which are all considered to be products of the Supreme Personality of Godhead's energy. So this is one universe, but he has innumerable universes, all filled with innumerable planets. And these material universes all together is only one fourth of, the, of God's creation. This shows his unlimited potency. So, the last part of the perfect, yet this is only one fourth of God's creation. The other three fourths of creation constitute the spiritual world. Among the innumerable planets in only one universe, the so-called scientist cannot understand even the moon and Mars, but they try to defy the creation of the Supreme Lord and his uncommon energy. Such man has been described as crazy. Namam Pramata, Kurta, Vikrote, Vikarma. Such crazy men unnecessarily waste time, energy, and money in attempting to defy the glorious activities of Ukrama, the supreme personality of God. And now we are reading the last two verses. If what that uh, so, because we are yeah, 30 and 31. If one hears about the uncommon activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his various incarnations, he is certainly elevated to the higher planetary system and even brought back home, back to Godhead. Whenever the activities of Brahman Deva are described in course of a ritualistic ceremony, whether the ceremony be performed to please the demigods, to please one's forefathers in Pitriloka, or to celebrate social events like a marriage, that ceremony should be understood to be extremely auspicious. And that is the end of Bali Maharaj pastime. That, uh, so before we are uh, we, we pause, uh, I will first look at the question of Mother Shalangi. She writes about 823, 8, 8, Yes, I have it here. But one who does not neglect these favors and does not receive them, that uh, is that in the purport? Yes, it's it. One who knows how to receive favors from the authority can receive them, but one who does not neglect these favors and does not receive them. Yeah, one who knows how to receive favors from the authority can receive them. That's, yeah, it says, so one who knows who to receive them can receive the favor from the authority. That, uh, so we know how to receive them. We perform their voice and service and we will we surrender to Krishna. But one who does not so, so one who does not know this and does not surrender, neglect these favors. 
and does not receive them. I, I, it's not gram grammatically incorrect, but it, 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 it is an awkward way of, of uh, presenting it. You must be English speaking to see what's going on here. Well, your native language, I know. That, but it's it's good. That, uh, but yes, thank you for asking this question. If something is not clear, we can ask it, but that's the best. That uh, so now that uh, uh, before posing, first we have this previous question. This previous question. It's quite clear, I think. Three reasons why the Lord's awarding Balaam at the, the Sutala planet was a great benediction. It was greater than the heavenly planets. It's a, pleasant, it's a better place. That, uh, that's the first thing. It was constructed by uh, Vishva karma. That, uh, that uh, it was more opulent. And the Lord will be the Shotidar of Bali Maharaj. He will protect him. That, uh, that's the greatest benediction of going to the Sutta planet. And if the demons would not listen to him, he would send his Sudarshan Chakra. That's another reason. That so they will have to listen to him. That uh, and another benediction was on this on this Sutta planet. Bali Maharaj would not be influenced by the mentality of the demons. So many benedictions. But let us concentrate on this. Explain Sukhachar's such judgment that Bali Maharaj was faultless. So we will now have a pause for 10 minutes. 10 minutes. It's now 8 past 5. So we will have a pause till 20 past 5 before we start with the next chapter, the introduction of that. And uh, please post your answer on this question in the chat. Just one sentence. Why Sukhachari's judgment at Bali Maharaj was faultless? That, uh, so I leave the question on the screen. And see you in 10 minutes. Thank you. Hi, Krishna. So we are back. I read all your answers. And it's very clear that you have understood the understood Sukhachari's explanation that Pali Maj was faultless. Yes, the purpose is to satisfy Vishnu. And therefore, Bali Maharaj fulfilled the purpose of the sacrifice. And every fault we may have may be nullified by that. So, maybe Mother Hema Gopi, you, you, want, you wanted to say something. So please speak. Hare Krishna, Ma. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, Maharaj. Uh, I have I had heard from my grandmother that uh, Bali Maharaj was pushed by the toe of Vamana Dev um, and sent down to uh, Sutala Loka like that. Is that, is that a bona fide? Uh, I, I don't remember reading it or hearing it. So is that bona fide description? I was wondering, Maharaj. Thank you. Can you, can you say that is 
again, what, what did your grandmother say? She said that Bali Maharaj was pushed to the hellish region uh, by Vamana Dev because he pushed with the tip of his stone and he pushed him down to like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's not mentioned in the Bhagavatam. That's not mentioned there. That, uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, there are many uh, popular uh, or, 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 or local folkloristic interpretations of this pastime for sure. That, uh, but yes, it, it pushed him down in some sense to Sutal, but it was an elevation more than, than ever. But, uh, but yeah, in our version of, of the Bhagavad Purana, the Bhagavatam, it's not mentioned. It's, so we should not consider that in our preaching and not using such things. That, uh, but we find that sometimes, you know, so many stories that, but we stick to the Bhagavatam. So this, this is the pastime of Bali Maharaj. One, one may say, yes, that's a pastime, but what, what we, we thus, we Lord Krishna to the same thing with us, taking every, everything away that you are forced to surrender. That, uh, do we have that experience? When I came to the movement, I was a chartered accountant and a specialist in software. This is the beginning of the 80s. The first personal computer just came out and I was able to start a company, a software company, and with different employees, very successful. That uh, I was married, I had two children, I had, I, I had a big house, completely paid for. We had, we had a big car, a BMW. That, uh, we had a company with more than 300 clients. That uh, everything was flourishing. But then I came in contact with the devotees and I started to chant Hare Krishna. And I was sincere. I wanted to make spiritual advancement. Some sincerity must have been there. What happened then? My wife found another husband, another relationship. I was forced to divorce. The next, but I continued chanting Hare Krishna. My associates in the company didn't agree and the company collapsed. My family rejected me because I became a Hindu. So I lost literally everything in a few, yeah, in two years time, everything. What could I do? I lost everything. I joined the temple. That was my only solution. I joined the temple that, and I felt very happy when I joined the temple. This is Krishna's mercy. It plucks you out from a very entangled situation. 
and makes you free from everything and puts you in the association of devotees where you can make spiritual advancement. So my experience is it does it does not do that only with Bali man. And I'm sure you may have all your own stories how Krishna has taken things away from you and uh, helped you to surrender. But by hearing this person of Bali Maharaj, we become inspired to follow him, to follow him and give our life to Krishna. That, uh, yes. This was what Srila uh, Prabhupada said to my Guru Maharaj, Bhakti Charamaj, why not give this life to Krishna and see what happens? Very interesting. So now we have we are coming at the end of this pastime and we are going in quite a very different pastime. And we may wonder how do we come from Bali Maharaj to Matsya Avatar that uh, it's the last chapter of the eighth canto, and it describes the whole pa pastime of Matsya Avatar. And today we will get the introduction of the pastime that uh, and we will discuss it mainly tomorrow. So chapter 24. So we are entering the final chapter of Canto 8. Matcha, the fish incarnation that the Lord can take any form when he has a purpose to fulfill. And that's something what we learn from this past time. This incarnation has nothing to do with a fish from this world. That uh, fish are considered the lowest creatures, right? On the evolutionary scale, in both Vedic evolutionary measurement and the current scientific one, the, a, a fish have, has very little brain substance and they are happy to go around in a little bowl or pond as long as they can't remember that, that, that they have been there before. They pass their excrements into the water and they breathe to that same water. They are not considered very high creatures. That, uh, but when Krishna assumes or takes a form of a fish, it's a fish with a horn, we will see, that uh, is still completely transcendental. That, uh, and again, we are prepared by the Bhagavatam for Krishna's own appearance in the tenth canto. We just heard of the Lord in the form of a dwarf Brahman, and he's transcendental. And even so, he's a dwarf, meaning quite small in size, with his footstep, because he's unlimited, he pierces the universe with his foot. So Krishna can take the form of a dwarf and be unlimited. And Krishna takes the form of a fish and can be unlimited. And Krishna can take the form of a hog and being unlimited. And Krishna is in his original form as a coward boy. He's unlimited. And he's not a coward boy, a fish or a dwarf. He's not a coward boy, but he wants to enjoy pastimes as coward boy or fish. Why? Because he has devotees that he wishes to relate to and perform that pastime. 
So after hearing the Dwarf Incarnation, Maharaj Pariksit said in text one. So, Sri Raju Vacha, Bhagavan Shrotamichami, Are Abdutta Karmana, Avatar Katam Adyam, Maya Matsha Vidam Banam. My speaks, it said, the Supreme Personality of Kotatari is eternally situated in his transcendental position. Yet he descends to this material world and manifests himself in Paris incarnation. His, fish, his first incarnation was that of a great fish, a most powerful Sukadev Goswami. I wish to hear from you the pastimes of that fish incarnation. So, the Lord is always transcendental or beyond this material world. Transcendental is it's a definition to the negative, we can say. This means that it's not of this world. Like a prisoner will think there are two kinds of people in the world. There are the prisoners and there are those who are free, right? The free means that those who are not prisoners. But among the non-prisoners, -prison -prison those who are free, they are doing so many things and, and one can possibly describe what they are doing as they are not residents of the prison house. Saying that Krishna is transcendental, that is always transcendental, disregarding this form means that it's not touched or contaminated by the prison house of the material world. He's beyond, yet as there are unlimited varieties of free persons, there are also unlimited varieties within transcendence. But it is not that everyone is free, everyone free is doing the same thing or is just being free. But Krishna is manifesting his individuality in an unlimited way and the free souls manifesting it in it in a more minute way. The Lord cannot be moved from this, from his transcendental position. Even if he's in the body of a fish or dwarf, he descends by his own mercy by his Atma Maya, out of his own desire, not forced by the material energy as we find ourselves in the material world. Yet although he is eternally situated in his transcendental position, he descends in this world and manifests himself in different incarnations. The Lord accepts the form of a fish, but obviously it's going to be a quite uncommon fish and we will hear about him now. My spirit, it continues, is questioning. It says, what was the purpose for which the Supreme Personality of Godhead accepted the abominable form of a fish exactly as an ordinary living being accept different forms under the laws of karma? The form of a fish is certainly condemned and full of terrible pain. Oh my Lord, what was the purpose of this incarnation? Kindly explain it to us for hearing about the pastimes of the Lord is auspicious for everyone. So the Lord does not accept the form as an ordinary condition soul accepts the form because there's a difference between the soul and the crows and the subtle body, the soul inhabits. But Krishna is accepting the form of a fish, then he's basically accepting the mood of a fish. That, uh, it is not that he is different from that form, that uh, he is that form. His fish-like body is completely transcendental. It is composed of eternity, bliss, and knowledge from the purport of text 2 3. 
Common day, for example, appears to save the devotee Baramach. So externally, Brahman came to came, came, came to save Indra's position, but actually he came to save Bali Maharaj. Similarly, the Supreme Personality of God had accepted the abominable form of a fish. He must have done so to favor some devotee. Parikshit Maharaj was eager to know about the devotee for whom the Supreme Lord accepted this form. Text 4 and 5. Sutta Goswami said, When, Mar when Parikshit Maharaj does inquire from Sukadev Goswami, the most powerful saintly person began describing the pastimes of the Lord's incarnation as a fish. Sukadev Goswami said, O king, for the sake of protecting the cows, the Brahmins, the demigods, the devotees, the Vedic literature, religious principles and principle, principles to fulfill the purpose of life, the Supreme Personality of God that accepts the forms of incarnations. So this is a general statement, we can say. There are reasons why the Lord so-called descends in the material world. But we say descent, but I'm hesitant to use that word, descent. But as we usually say, he descends in this material world, but actually he does not descend in this material world. He never comes into the material world. He's always transcendental to the material world. But it appears that he seems to be in the inner material world or not. Text 6. Like the air passing through different types of atmosphere, the Supreme Personality of God, that although appearing sometimes as a human being, sometimes as a lower animal, is always transcendental because he is above the material modes of nature. He is unaffected by higher and lower forms. So all embodied souls in this world are afflicted or controlled by different combinations of the modes of material nature. Sometimes one person is very passionate and another is less passionate and some is more ignorant and, and, and another is more, more self-satisfied in the mode of goodness. So this is not our choice. I'm not choosing to be tired or active or self-satisfied. This is actually forced upon us by the different combinations of the modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. So whatever form we are in, that uh, we see that in different animals, cows, they are generally just peaceful, right? Which that indicates the mode of goodness. It's something to do with the mode of goodness. Monkeys are the perfect example of non-peace monkeys because they are fighting, engaged in other activities, jumping from one wolf from one place to another, and they go to sleep, especially as noon time, at noon time. As soon as they stop moving, the monkeys they fall asleep. That and they are and when they are moving, they are fighting. So then there are many other inner animals, such as squirrels flapping here and there, as different animals have different natures. So we individual, in the individuals have different propensities, born of different combinations of the modes of material nature. But when Krishna comes to this world, the modes of nature, passion, or ignorance, goodness, they did not touch him. They do not force him to act in any way as they force, uh, uh, force us to act in a certain way. Then the example in text 6, like the air passing through different types of atmosphere. I will read text, text, text 6 again. That, uh, so like the air passing through different types of atmosphere, the Supreme Personality of God is only appearing sometimes as a human being and sometimes as a lower animal. 
it's always transcendental because he's above the material modes of nature. He's unaffected by higher and lower forms. So the Lord is situated in his own bliss continuously and only despite what form he appears in. Because he's not within a form, we are within, it's not within a form like we are in, in this body. Yeah? So the purpose. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the master of material nature. Everything in this material world is going on under my supervision, under my vision, is the supervisor. But therefore, being the supreme controller of the laws of nature, the Lord cannot be under their influence. An example given in this regard that although the wind blows to many places, the air is not affected by the qualities of these places. Although the air sometimes carries the odor of a filthy place, the air has nothing to do with such a place. Similarly, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, being all good and all auspicious, is never affected by the material qualities like an ordinary living being. Pusa, Pusa Pratistri Bhunti Pratijan Kuna. Why is the living an entity affected? Why is the living entity affected to the qualities of, mo of the modes according to this verse? The second line tells us why is one affected by the material modes? The third line, Karanam Guna Sangasya, says that therefore is affected by the modes of by the modes, and the fourth line is the result, the birth and death. What caused the living entity to be affected by, by material nature? That, yes, it's Bhumte Pagatijan Kunan. That Bhumte, it desires to enjoy. We hold on that desire to enjoy, but Krishna has no desire to enjoy. That. So. When living entity in the material nature is affected by its qualities, the supreme personality of God, that, however, is not affected. Disrespectfully, one who does not know this considers the supreme personality of God that an ordinary living being, Avajana Tima Muda. Param Babam Ajanata. Such a conclusion is reached by unintelligent. Uh, by unintelligent because they are unaware of the transcendental qualities of the Lord. They are unaware of the qualities of the Lord that are transcendental. Now Sukadev Goswami is going to describe the past uh, of Matsya, text 7, 8, 9. O King Parichit, at the end of the past millennium, at the end of Brahma's day, because Lord Brahma sleeps during the night, uh, annihilation took place. And the three worlds were covered by the water of the ocean. At the end of Brahma's day, when Brahma felt sleepy and desired to lie down, the Vedas were an emanating from his mouth. And the great demon named Ayajiva stole the Vedic knowledge. Understanding the acts of the great demon Ayajiva, Supreme Personality of God at Hari, who is full of all opulences, but assumed the form of a fish and saved the Vedas by killing the demon. So because everything was inundated by water to save the Vedas, it was necessary for the Lord to assume the form of a fish. That, uh, so this was during a different manu. That uh, the first manu was Svayambhuva manu when he came to kill Ayashi but to save the Vedas. So that was during the Saksus Manvantar, the 
first one. Fixed them. Mm -hmm. That uh, during the Sakshi Samambata, there was a great king named Satyavrata, who was a great devotee of the Supreme Personality of God. Satyavrata performed austerities by subsisting only on water. That uh, so. This is a different incarnation of Matsha than the previous one. But in the Lagu Bhagavatamrita, Sila Rupa Goswami describes how Matsya avatar comes 14 times. 14 times he comes. So this is the second time. What does Satyavrata mean? Satyavrata means a true, true vow, Satyavrata. That he was subsisting only on water. That's quite a vow he took, only subsisting on water. Takes 10. That, uh, but I read the purple to text 10, the short purple. Yeah. The Lord assumed one fish incarnation to save the Vedas at, at the beginning of the Svayambhuva Mambantar. And at the end of sex, the Saksha Mambantar, the Lord again assumed the form of a fish just to favor the great king named Satyavrata. As there were two incarnations of Paraha, there were also two incarnations of fish. The Lord appeared as one fish incarnation to save the Vedas by killing Arjiva, and he assumed the other fish incarnation to show favor to King Satyavata. So different. That, uh, so the present man in his Sakshu Samanu, so one of the characteristics of the Bhagavatam is that the, it explains the Manvantars. 10 topics of the Bhagavatam, you may remember. That's, that's 2, 10, 1. Shows, I, if I remember correctly, the 10 topics of the Bhagavatam. That, uh, and it's this topic here relates to the different incarnations of Manu, Ishanukata. Ishanukata means the topics of different forms of the Lord. Text 12 to 15. So, said, in the present millennium, King Satyavata became later, later became the son of Vipashvan, the king of the sun planet, and was known as Shraddhadev. By the mercy of the Supreme Personality of God, it was given the post of man. One day, while King Satyavata was performing austerities by offering on the bank, water on the bank of the river Kritamala, a smaller fish, a fish appeared in the water in his palms. That, uh, then Satyavata, the king of Gavida, this, threw the fish into the water of the river, along with the water in his palm. King Brexit, the sentence of God. With an appealing voice, the, the, poor, the poor small fish said, said to, to King Satyavata, who was very merciful, my dear king, protector of the poor, why are you throwing me in the water of the river? Where there are other aquatics who will kill me, I'm very much afraid of them. 15. To please himself, King Satyavata, not knowing that the fish was the Supreme Personality of God, decided with great pleasure to give the fish protection. So here is an example of giving service to the Supreme Personality of God. That, uh, Right. So Bharat Maharaj was also doing austerities and he decided to give protection to a deer that 
and that caused him much trouble. But here Satyavata is giving protection to a fish, a fish and that's glorious because the fish is the supreme lord, but without any knowledge. He had no knowledge that he was the supreme personality of God. So devotional knowledge without knowledge is called Ahyata Sukriti or pious benefits without knowledge. So Shil Papa in the purple, such service is called Ahyata Sukriti. King Satyavata wanted to show his own mercy, not knowing that the fish was Lord Vishnu. By such unknowing devotional service, one is favored by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Service rendered to the Supreme Lord knowingly or unknowingly never goes in vain. We will need now read a few verses of the pastime. The merciful Lord, being moved by the pitiable words of the fish, placed the fish in a water jug and brought him to his own residence. But in one night that fish grew so much that he could not move his body comfortable in the water of the pot. He then spoke to the king as follows. Oh, my dear king, I do, I do not like living in this water pot with such great difficulty. Therefore, please find some better reservoir of water where I can live comfortably. Then taking the fish out of the water pot, the king threw him in a large well. But within a moment, the fish developed to the length of three cubits. Then the fish said, the fish then said, my dear king, this reservoir of water is not fit for my happy residence. Please give me a more extensive pool of water for I have taken shelter of you. 21. On March Brexit, the king took the fish from the well and threw him in a lake, but the fish then assumed a gigantic form exceeding the extent of the water. The fish then said, O oh king, I am a large aquatic and this water is not at all suitable for me. Now kindly, some way, find some way to save me. It it would be better to put me in the water of a lake that will never reduce. When thus requested, King Satyavata took the fish to the largest reservoir of water. But when that also proved insufficient, the king at last threw the gigantic fish into the ocean. It's not clear from the verse how, how he managed to transport the fish from this large reservoir to the ocean. That, that's interest, interesting. Text 24. While being thrown into the ocean, the fish said to the king Satyavata, O oh, hero, in this water there are very powerful and dangerous sharks that will eat me. Therefore, you should not throw me in this place. After hearing the sweet words, the Supreme Personality of God in the form of a fish. The king, being bewildered, asked him, Who are you, sir? You simply bewilder us. My lord, in one day you have expanded yourself for hundreds of miles, covering the water of the river and the ocean. Before this, I've never seen or heard of such an aquatic, aquatic animal. My lord, you are certainly the inexhaustible supreme personality of God at Narayan Shiari. It is to show your mercy to the living entities that you have now assumed the form of an aquatic. So the fish is clearly not an ordinary fish. It's clearly extra extraordinary. Its, it's growing pattern is astonishing. Whatever form the Lord takes, he is transcendental. Matcha is not a fish of this world. This fish possessed unlimited potency even when he was a small fish. 
like Vamundev expanded himself, Lord Matsya expanded himself in the form of a huge fish. The potency of the Lord is also unlimited. Again, these concepts need to be deeply implanted in our consciousness before we hear about Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. Text 21. O Master, O, o my Lord, Master of creation, maintenance, and annihilation, the best of enjoyers, Lord Vishnu, you are the leader and destination of surrender devotees like us. Therefore, let me offer my respectful obeisance unto you. All your pastimes and incarnations are certainly appear for the welfare of all living entities. Therefore, my Lord, I wish to know the purpose for which you have assumed this form of a fish. But, uh, so, we have heard here, he said in 28, the, you are the leader and destination of surrender devotees like us. Leader and destination, so why leader? Why is he the leader of the surrender devotees? Is the leader and the surrender devotees follow him? This is what it means to be surrendered. Whatever you want me to do, I will do. So why is the destination? Why is he the destination of the surrender devotees? Devotees does not want anything in this world. And he just wants to be with the Lord because he's in love. That, uh, in other words, Satyavata has understood that this is the Lord. He offers humble obeisances. And he says, it's quite as astounding, my Lord. You are in the form of a fish now. But when you come to this world, then there's a purpose behind it. So what is your purpose? Why did you come to this world? That uh, then we will read text 30, which is the last text we will read today. Oh, my Lord, possessing eyes like the petals of a lotus, the worship of the demigods, who are in the bodily concept of life, is fruitless in all respect because you are the supreme friend and dear most super soul of everyone. Worship of your Lord's feet is never useless. You have therefore manifested your form as a fish. So we have seen that in the last pastime, that the worship of the demigods was fruitless because well, who was the person that the Lord actually benedicted? The demigods worshiped the Lord. That, uh, and what did they want? They wanted to regain heaven. The basic idea there for the, for the demigods is sakam. They have material desires. And what do they get? They gain the results. They can gain the fulfillment of their material desires. But Bali Maharaj gave up, renounced his material desires. So we must remember this point. He renounced his material desires for the pleasure of Lord Vamandev. So one of the gates we have to pass through is the gate of material desires to attain Krishna. You have to give it up. So in and and in the next class tomorrow, this point will come up again. But, so the great key in giving up as material desires shall be revealed how to do it. The worship of the demigods is fruitless because they are in the bodily concept of life. When I'm thinking that I'm my body, then I'm not thinking that I'm your servant. Then the actual results they will not obtain. Yet it is in our interest to give up our material desires and not to be in the bodily concept of life, rather be in the spiritual concept of life, which begins with I'm Krishna's servant. Shivaras Rupa Hoi Krishna Nitya Das means Krishna. This is our own form. 
Krishna, Shibaya's Rupa Han, Krishna Nityadas. So we will continue tomorrow and finish the pastime and the eighth canto tomorrow if Krishna willing. So first, are there any questions? So, Madhurama Gopi, yes, please speak. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, this canto is called Withdrawal of Cosmic Creations. And uh, I thought somehow the name is uh, reflecting in, it should be reflecting in the chapters. Could you kindly help me understand uh, why this canto is called like that? Withdrawal of Cosmic Creations. Withdrawal of the Cosmic Creations. That... Uh, Yes, withdrawal, final interpretation is annihilation that uh, we are discussing here, a partial annihilation that uh, at the end, in, at least in the chapter we are discussing now, that uh, yes, I don't know why this title is given, but it's one of the topics of the Bhagavatam. This annihilation that uh, and uh, it is mentioned in the in this chapter here that uh, yeah. Otherwise, I don't know. It's a good question that. Uh, I don't know why Srila Prabhupada gave this title. Yeah. Good point. We will inquire about that. Uh, someone has another question. Thank you, Mara. That, uh, so, uh, if you don't have further questions, I Propose that if I share my own story, how Krishna took everything away from me. But I'm sure you have also stories. Uh, you can, if you want to share, and we are happy to hear them. Of course, it's your choice to share them, you no obligation. But I'm sure you have all some stories. So, if someone wants to speak, but, uh, um, Rabbi Gopal Prabhu writes, do demigods fall under Arto and Artarti? Yeah, yeah, that's the first Chaturpi Java Jantaman, Yechna. Yeah. Chaturvichab Jantaman, Yajna Sukhitaryuna, Achta Sihnasir Achtarti, Yanisa Arataksipa, Achta, those who are in distress, and Achtarti, those who want wealth. Yes, they fall under this category, but uh, their desires are more subtle than our desires on this planet. But yes, they are neophyte devotees. In that sense, they are not pure devotees. They are materialistic devotees. But their desires are not so gross. It's not so much about sense gratification. It's about ruling the universe and controlling and uh, live an opulent life that in heaven, that is more subtle, their sense gratification. There, therefore, they are in goodness, uh, but some passion is there. Passion is the sense for enjoyment. So goodness is also binding, it's said in the Bhagavad Gita, that they think everything is all right. But, uh, 
Yeah, it's a, a good observation. So, anyone wants to share something? Krishna never took away something from you. I'm the only one. Maharaj, one question. Yes, she never asked to call from. <clears throat> Maharaj, it is mentioned here uh, in Dravida Desha, he was the ruler. Satyavrata. So this the, in Satya Yuga, this Dravida name was there. Yeah. Dravida is like you know South India it is called. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. It, it could be that uh, it could be South India. India was also there in Satya Yuga. And it's the same man from that. Yes. That's a great personality. Possibility. Thank you. Okay, my thank you. Any other points? That, uh, good. There are no further points, then we will end the class here and I'm looking forward to see you tomorrow to end the eighth canto. And that's here what's going to happen with Matsa. That uh, it's an exciting pastime to end the to end the eighth canto. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Sai Prabhupada. Thank you, Mara. Thank you very much.